Okay, guys, for this next game, I can officially say I wrote the book on it, okay? It's true because there has not been any real literature about this game outside of Super System 2, which you can pick up a copy of if you want a more extensive uh, understanding of this game. I've, I got rave reviews for this one. I wrote it obviously many years ago, but it gives you the basic understanding of how to play Deuce 7 Triple Draw. Now, it's a game that hasn't been around forever. Um, I want to say like more popular the last seven, eight years. Um, but I took a liking to it, and thanks to a gentleman by the name of John Jawanda, he taught me some tricks that have made me pretty, pretty good at the game. Um, very confident in my ability, especially in tournaments. I've done quite well in these things. Um, but it's a really fun game. It can be very, very frustrating, though, because sometimes, you know, you're a victim to the deck, you know, and, like, you can go through streaks where you got deuce three, four, seven, which we'll explain in a moment is a very good hand, and you catch, you know, queen, king, king, and you don't, you miss all three streets. Um, but of course, long term, play the percentages you do just fine. So let's talk exactly, let's talk a little bit about how exactly this game works, okay? So it works in the same sense of like hold them in the sense that it has a button, small blind, big blind, okay? And then there'll be um, uh, betting street. Let's say, for example, again, you're, let's say you're playing 100, 200. The first couple streets are uh, $100 bets, and then after that is 200. Now, what happens is everyone gets five cards face down. You don't see no cards, no flops coming, no nothing. It's just five face cards down. Players bet and raise based on the value of their hands, right? Now, whoever's left in the pot in position, they have to draw. They, they can choose to draw. You can stay pat. If you like the five cards you've got, if you have like the best hand, which is two, three, four, five, seven, we'll get to that in a second, you can just wrap pat. Uh, otherwise, you can take as many as one, anything from one to five cards. You can throw away your whole hand and get a new one. Probably not ideal. <laughs> I wouldn't advise just like calling a raise and then just saying, give me five cards. <laughs> like, why'd you even call in the first place? Um, but I, we've actually seen Gus Hansen and Elliot Lesser do that. This is what Tilt will do to somebody. Um, <laughs> they've actually drawn five. I've seen it with my own eyes. Um, but anyway, uh, so the, the way the game works is the best hand is actually the worst poker hand, right? So whatever would lose <laughs> in a poker showdown wins here. So what's the worst possible hand you can get in, in Texas Hold'em? What's the worst? Deuce, three, four, five, seven, right? No pair, seven low, like anything lower than that would be a straight. Deuce, three, four, five, six is a straight, uh, and an ace counts for high. So basically, you just want junk. <laughs> you just want five junky cards, which of course in this game are not junk. So what'll happen is there'll be one draw, another bet. Now on the second draw, the bet doubles. So there'll be another draw. And then on the third draw, you'll have one final bet. Uh, one final draw and then one final bet. Okay, so let's um, take a look as we always do at what starting hands you should be considering and what just doesn't make sense for you to play. Now, first and foremost, the rule is don't leave home with a deuce, okay? I talked in Omaha High Low about like an ace being very important and powerful. Um, multiply that by 10 in triple draw deuce to seven, okay? The deuce is super imperative. Why? Because without a deuce, First of all, you run into a lot of straight draw card hands, which you don't want, and you can't make a seven without a deuce. It's not possible. Three, four, five, like, oh, I don't have a deuce, no problem. I'll go three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, like that's it. Yeah, that's a straight. That doesn't help you, right? Because remember, worst hand wins. So the deuce is a super important card. It's more, it's easily three times more powerful than any other card. Now, one of the few times you don't necessarily need to have a deuce is like when you're dealt a pat eight. So you know, let's say you have a, you know, three, four, five, seven, eight. Well, you can't draw to that hand and you've got an eight, seven. These are the types of hands that you want to stay pat with. Um, pretty much anytime you get a pat eight, you want to stay pat. Of course, a seven is unbreakable. You can't ever like decide to go for a better seven. The best seven, of course, is two, three, four, five, seven. If you have two, three, five, six, seven, you don't throw away the six and go for the four. Okay. That's just not a thing. Now, the next grouping of hands would be, you know, not pan hands, now we're on one card draws. So what's the best one card draw you can get? What do you think it is? I'll give you a second. One card draw, okay? Pick four cards. Go ahead, think for a second. Tell me when you're ready. Got it? All right. Two, three, four, seven. Absolutely the best starting hand you can get as far as one card draws go. You catch a five, you make the nuts. You catch a six, you make the second nuts. You catch a, uh, you know, an eight, you make number 10, which is the 10th best possible hand. So a uh, very, very strong starting hand and you wanna play that one aggressively. You can look at some other one card draws as well that you can play that include an eight, hands like, uh, for example, deuce four, five, eight, 
and uh, occasionally, as I said, once in a while you can play one card draws that don't have a deuce if you have three, four, six, eight, because with three, four, six, eight, you're not worried about straight draws. You don't wanna play straight draws, right? So if you started with three, four, five, seven, which is well, four parts to a wheel, problem is you've got literally just one card to catch, the deuce. No other card is all that great for you. Sure, you can catch an eight and you can make an eight, seven, but overall, if you are gonna play this hand, and there are gonna be some cases where I'm gonna, you know, I guess I could teach you how to snow this hand, you might want to try that occasionally, but like, especially if there's a lot of people in the hand, like two guys in front of you, what, what's the most likely card in their hand? A deuce. They know how to play. So what does that mean for you? Well, there's two less deuces for you to catch. So you don't want to play these straight drives. You certainly don't want to play four, five, six, seven, because if you have four, five, six, seven, you can't even catch an eight anymore. You can't catch a three. You, you know, a nine gives you nine, seven, which is fine. And then of course the deuce gives you the worst seven, but you don't want to draw to straight draws. Now, the most common draw you're gonna see typically in these hands is a two card draw, okay? So what would you consider the best two card draw? Now, we got the one card draw down, which was deuce three, four, seven. What do you think is the best two card draw? Okay, all right, so you said deuce three, seven, or, and some of you said deuce three, four, and you're both basically right, okay? They're, they're both really, really strong. Deuce three, four and deuce three, seven are uh, good, you know, I, I actually think heads up, deuce three, four is, a favorite over deuce three seven. I actually have done the math on this, but deuce three seven plays better against any other hand, right? So which is better? I don't know. Who cares? It's amazing. They're great. The reason the deuce three four does better uh, often is because when you make an eight with deuce three four, and you make an eight with deuce three seven, the eight seven always loses to every time the deuce three four makes an eight six or uh, something like that. So like if you catch the same cards, for example, if you both catch an eight and a six, well the deuce three four wins. Um, so yeah, but anyway, anyway, those any any two card draw that is three parts to a wheel, like deuce four, seven, deuce five, seven, um, they're, they're valuable. The ones you don't wanna play, of course, are like three, four, five, four, five, seven, because four, five, seven is a tricky one, because eh, look, you know, it looks okay, but again, you don't have no deuce. Especially if you're drawing two cards, you really wanna have a, a deuce, unless the one outlier I would say would be like three, four, eight, or three, five, eight occasionally. Not four, five, eight, because four, five, eight is a straight draw. Three, four, eight, you're never gonna make a straight. Now let's take a look, why not at three card draws? When would you draw three cards? Like, what are you, nuts? Well, there are some cases. Let's say, for example, you're on the button uh, and you have you know, a good three card draw, especially if you have a lot of pairs in your hand, which we'll get to, there might be some value. But if you have on the button and it's just the blinds and they're pretty conservative, you have like deuce seven, deuce three, deuce four, deuce five. Those are hands you can open with, especially again, if you have another deuce and a seven in your hand or something along those lines, which we'll get to, I promise. The one hand notice I left out was the six do six, that's a stretch, right? So with a do six, you can still make a seven low, but the six is like the worst of the baby cards, right? It's like, it, the, the six is worse than a seven and an eight in a sense. And, be, well, maybe not an eight. Well, yeah, it can be worse than an eight. Six is just not a great card because when you do make, you know, sevens, you always make seven sixes. When you make, you know, like eights, it's just, you want to draw smoother. You want to draw from the bottom up. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend a uh, a three card draw with a deuce six. The other time you wanna draw three is when you're in the big one, okay? A lot of times, you know, you're getting a good price. If it's one bet to you and you have deuce three or deuce four, go ahead and, you know, see if you can catch lightning in a bottle. You might be able to make a wheel right on the first street. A wheel, by the way, in this game is different than ace to five. Ace to five, it's ace, two, three, four, five. This wheel, we call it deuce three, four, five, seven. Okay, now let's talk about how to play your hands before the first draw, right? And you wanna think Limit Hold'em. Again, if you haven't watched the Limit Hold'em video, go do that. You'll have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. And essentially what I mean is three bet, get the blind out. We just talked about the blind getting priced in with three card draws like deuce four and stuff like that. So don't give them a good price, especially if you're in position. Position is really powerful in this game because you get to make your decisions after seeing information. So for example, your opponent draws one, you're like, oh, well you draw one, I guess I'm good then. Whereas if you're out of position, you don't have that information. So you don't really know what they're gonna do. So position is power. So when you're in position, you should be three betting. Basically, even if you have a two card draw, so you have deuce four seven and a guy raised, right? Well, you're like, well, you're drawing two, he might be drawing one or pat, but still, you should go ahead and raise with these hands. With uh, three draws to come, you have a very good chance to make a hand in this situation. And again, most players are raising with two card draws themselves. So, you know, it's a little bit of a race, but you have position again, which is very, very important. Okay, so I promised I would talk a little bit about why pairs are valuable for you. And um, anytime you have paired cards, that makes your hand stronger. Why? Because it takes away potential outs that your opponent may need, right? So let's say, for example, you started with deuce four, seven, right? Deuce, deuce. 
Okay. Well, he makes one leg, you know, it's going to be hard for your opponent to catch a deuce if he doesn't have one. Let's look at a different example. Let's say you started with deuce four seven and you got four and you had four four. A little bit more likely because typically people already start with a deuce. Well, this guy very likely needs a four, and if he doesn't have one, he's not going to get one. So the more paired cards you have, the less likely it is your opponent is going to catch the cards he needs. And that opens up one of my favorite aspects of triple draw is the ability to snow. And snowing essentially means well bluffing but bluffing that you have a pat hand. So essentially you're saying, I'm pat, I want no more cards, which lets everyone else know. It's like, okay, well, he's done. He's got a seven, he's got an eight, maybe he's got a nine occasionally. But typically in this game, you wanna be drawing to sevens and eights. Sometimes you back into nines. Sometimes you may draw to nines in extreme examples. But overall, if someone stays pat early in a hand, you figure, well, that's really strong. We don't always have to be. Let's look at an example of a snow where you might wanna do that. Let's say you started with Deuce five, six, six, six. So you have three sixes, right? Which is again, not a favorite card, but it's an important card that helps to fill hands. Yeah, and it's not that great a hand and there's three way action and all of a sudden there's a lot of raises and it's like, oh, okay, you're, you're behind, right? But you're in the hand. So now you catch on the next street, you catch five, five. So you got two fives out, two sixes out. Well, very likely the guys that are drawn would really like to have those cards. And the fact that they don't makes it very difficult for them to make a hand that they can call with. So this could be a situation where you might raise, bet, play aggressively, stay pat. Now you bet the hand all the way to the river and it's important you gotta bet that last card. And then, then when they miss, they catch a queen, they catch a jack, which beats you, all these hands beats you. They figure, well, you know what? He stayed pat so early, why would he do that? He's probably got a seven or an eight. Uh, there's no sense for him to be bluffing here. So they're just gonna fold their hand if they make a pair or anything like that. So. Because you have all the paired cards, it gives you valuable information that can allow you to snow in certain situations. Now, you don't always have to have pairs of stuff, but if you want to use like a random number generator in your head as far as like when to bluff and when to snow, look for situations when you've paired a lot of cards, which makes it less likely that your opponent is going to make his hand. One other simple rule I want to talk about is whenever you're a card ahead, you should be betting. So for example, you know, you're drawing one, your opponent's drawing two, just bet. Doesn't matter if you can prove or not. You look at your card, you didn't prove. If he was drawn two, you go ahead and bet. Uh, obviously, if you're pat and they're drawing, you're always betting up until the river. Now, let's move on to the second draw. Now, on the second draw, you're usually getting a pretty good price uh, because the pot's usually big. It's three bet before the flop. So even if you didn't improve on your two card draw and you're still drawing two, if it's one bet to you, you're getting a very good price to continue and try one more time. Now, if it's bet and raised in front of you and you feel like you might be in the whipsaw, you might want to fold, especially some of your rougher uh, draws. But for one bet on second draw, even if you're drawing two, you should continue. Um, if you've improved from a two-card draw to a one-card draw and your opponent was drawing two as well, like, you should be betting. You know, even though you didn't make your hand, you want to be betting because he might just fold at some point. You just bet. <laughs> if they fold, good for you. You win the pot. You'll, you'll take it. They're usually mountainous. This game plays bigger than all the other games in the mix. Triple draw is a super important game to learn how to un and understand how to play because the variance is really high. You put in a lot of bets, you get tied onto these hands because pots get so big, you have to go to the end. So um, you really want to like work on your triple draw game if you're going to play mixed tournaments especially. Now let's talk about the last draw, okay? The last draw is where math really matters. Math really comes into play and understanding like what is a favorite over a draw, situations like that. This is where position really matters. So let's take a look at a graphic right here. So as you can see from the graphic, if a guy has deuce three, four, seven, jack versus a person who's drawing to deuce three, four, seven, notice it's about 50-50. The jack is actually a small favorite, uh, you know, a pat jack. So you wouldn't think like, why would I want to keep a jack? With one draw left, uh, a jack is a favorite over any one card draw. Crazy, right? Let's look at a, a different jack hand. So imagine you had jack, eight, six, four, do. So you have a nice draw to the eight, right? Uh, and you're up against the guy who's got a seven, so you think, okay, throw the jack away. No, notice in this case, you're actually a little bit bigger of a favorite. And part of the reason for that, and we talked about this before, is you have cards he needs. You have that six he needs, you have that eight he needs. And with those cards dead, it increases your uh, odds of winning the hand. Now, this is where position really comes into play. Because if I'm out of position with deuce, three, four, seven, jack, I don't know what my opponent's doing. I don't know if he's gonna stay pat or not. So I'm not, I'm not gonna pat this jack, right? I'm gonna go ahead and draw, and, and draw to the, um, the seven. Now, that's not always the case. Like if you happen to have a hand where you 
you know, have jack eight, seven, six, three or something like that. If you found yourself in there, that's not a hand you want to break because you're going from a jack to like a really bad eight. Your opponent makes, makes his hand. You're probably going to lose anyway. So, and you could obviously make a pair or a worse hand than a jack and it's a favorite. So as I said, even, you know, against deuce three, four, seven, the best possible draw going to last draw, a jack is a favorite, which makes a 10 unbreakable. Um, again, the more important thing about this, this is why position matters so much is, uh, if you're out of position, you should tend to lead towards breaking these hands more. And then in position, if your opponent draws, you can pat, right? If your opponent pats, now you can break the jack. This is what's called the convertible type hand, where uh, you know you have a made hand essentially, but you also have the ability, especially in position, to draw and improve upon it a great deal. One other specific situation I wanna talk about going into the river, imagine a situation where you're both drawing one, okay? In this situation, pot's usually quite big. Um, if you make a 10 or better, sometimes even a jack, you should value bet these hands, right? Why? Because your opponent is getting such a good price that he should be calling a lot, right? So, you know, uh, if he has a queen or a king, he should be calling a decent amount of the time hoping that you paired. Now, when do you bluff them, right? Like, obviously, if the guy's going to call all the time, and you should be calling too because the pot's so big, when do you bluff? Well, again, we're going to use card distribution as a random number generator, and, uh, if you make really high pairs, let's say you paired eights or sevens, this might be an opportunity to bluff and you may, you'll, you'll get your opponent to often fold fives, fours, sixes, threes, something along those lines, maybe even a king or a queen if he just thinks you have it, right? So you don't want to bluff too much again because you're, the pot is laying such a good price to your opponent. They're just going to call you, but you want to have some in there. Otherwise you become far too predictable. So I would suggest as a general rule, when you pair your top card, the highest one you have in your hand, those would be the times that you go ahead and uh, try to steal one. Well, I hope that gives you guys kind of a fundamental understanding as to how the game works and a few tips on how to play it. But if you do want to actually dive in, uh, I highly recommend my chapter in Super System 2 that was written by Doyle Brunson and a few others. It was written, as I said, several years ago. There's a couple tweaks uh, math-wise that you would make, but really the book stands up. It's, uh, it's a solid, good chapter. I still pretty much play as I wrote in that chapter. So check it out. Check out Super System 2. Check out some of the other how-to videos if you haven't. How to play everything except No Limit Hold'em because, I mean, what the hell? You guys know how to play that. If, you've watched, if you're watching these videos, I'm sure you've heard of No Limit Hold'em and I don't need to teach you that. And I do that anyways on the breakdowns. But I'm really a fan of these mixed games. Triple Draw is a fun one to add to your home games. If you haven't tried it, give it a shot. It'll make people tilt especially when they lose three, four pots in a row. And it makes the game better. When, when you get guys tilting because they've lost a bunch of hands, big pots in a row, makes them play worse than the other games. Maybe good for you if you've got, you know, discipline and you're a Vulcan. So anyways, guys, that was fun. Peace out. How to play Triple Draw by d -Nex.